Sorry about that. Uh, I forgot that I left my battery charging with my battery case, so it overheated. Um, but anyways, I added the epoxy here and then added epoxy down there. Uh, so that way when I close the hinge down, it's actually going to connect and hold the hinge in place. So I'm going to do that now. All right. Okay, so it's a little tough to close down this thing. Here we go. Make sure it lines up. Okay, so, oops, sorry, my head was in the way. So the nice thing with this is it has these little plastic raised bits that help keep it aligned. So that way, at least when I have it in place, I know that it's in the right spot. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do now, as you can see, some of the epoxy hit that. We're basically now just going to put it back together. So push this cable back down in place. Uh, this one, since the cover has the nice thing that goes on top, it's going to actually hold the hinge in the proper spot so that the epoxy can harden. But normally what I do is I leave the computer like this and then just make sure that the hinge is holding itself up in the right position. Since one of the hinges are okay, I can actually adjust how far the hinge is closed and then it will hold itself in the proper orientation but I'm gonna put it back together just because I can um, I forgot to clean the fans so let me clean the fans out and then I'll be back all right so I'm back so I'm gonna be putting the fans back in place okay so we got this fan make sure that you route the wires back in this part might be a little tricky okay there we go Sure you have everything in place properly the wires do need to go underneath and this goes on top this might be a little tricky so let's see we got the other fan oops let me zoom back out so you can see that too put these epoxies away fan back in as well again be careful because now that this is setting with the epoxy you want to keep it still okay put that in place um, if you're wondering there's the CMOS or the BIOS battery here it's connected here you can actually pull this out if you want to you got this IO board with the USB ports and the headphone jack as well as this speaker connector here if you want you can remove these connectors as well you just flip these tabs up there is an adhesive holding this side down but you peel that up and then this metal tab flips up and you can pull this connector out this is like the MacBook um, 2013 to 2017 models or 20 sorry 2013 to 2015 models so if you wanted to see how to remove this connector if you can't figure it out just watch one of those videos how to remove the LCD or LVDS cable and these connectors all just pull out just like the other ones. Okay, so I'm going to put back the stuff before I end up damaging it by leaving it open. So we're going to put this back in first. Make sure you have these little tabs flipped up for later. So let's see, keyboard backlight connector here, touchpad connector, and the power button. The rest is okay. We left them down. All right, so we'll put this back in place. So what I'm going to do is put the screws under here first just to hold those in place so that they don't pop out later. Okay, so I'm going to clip all these little things back in place. Hopefully I won't, hopefully nothing was missed because if I have to put it, take it back out, it's going to mess up the epoxy and I might have to end up doing it again. Okay, so we got this cover closed. Okay, so let's see. So we need the screws there that were falling out on their own. So we are going to get those screws. And, oh, you can't really see it because it's so zoomed in, but the screws go for the bottom here. I don't want to move it around because that's going to mess up the alignment. So, but basically I'm going to get more of this thread locker stuff. And then I'm going to put it on the screw. 
Oops, I need to pop this open. So this is why the hinges usually break, is the screws come loose. And then when the screws come loose, as I mentioned earlier, it damages the screw mounts. So I always add the red thread locker to the hinge screws. Those are the most important ones, okay? So I'm gonna tighten up that screw. Sorry, my hand's blocking it. Okay, so now that we got that screw in place, the hinge should actually hold really strongly now. Um, but once the epoxy hardens completely, this epoxy, you usually want to leave it sitting overnight. Uh, so I would give it at least 12 hours, but if you can, give it 24 hours to sit. Okay, so we're going to put the other screw that's down here. I know it's blurry. I'm trying to do this without moving the thing around too much. So I'll show you later once I flip it back over. But just for now, I'm going to have to do it without turning it the right way. Okay. So we got that, all of that stuff in. Make sure you pop all the clips back on. Okay. There we go. Okay. So again, be careful with the connectors that are underneath the board. Okay, we need to reconnect the, let's see if I can zoom in for you. So we're gonna reconnect the touchpad or trackpad cable. All right, so just use the blue tab, pull it, and then line it up, slot it in. Once you got it slotted in, you can push the little black latch back down. Same thing with this one, sorry, I can't even see that. So same thing with this one. Okay. Line it up, slot it in, and then push the latch back down. That's the power button, so that one's very important. If your computer's not turning on, you probably forgot to reconnect that power button connector. All right, let's zoom back out. Now we're gonna have to put back the two screws here. All right, so we'll get the screw. One goes, I think it was here for the fan. All right, so put that one screw in. Yep, so, and then put the other screw over here. All right, make sure it's nice and tight. Put that in. There we go. So now we got all those screws in. Now we have to put the keyboard back in place. Okay, so for that, you just grab the connector here and slot it back in. Then you have to hold that connector down while you push this latch down. All right, there we go. Same thing with the keyboard backlight cable. I don't know if you're gonna be able to even see this because my hand will be in the way, but basically same idea, slot it in, push the latch down, All right? And there you go. So with the keyboard, like I was saying, bottom goes in first. You do want to kind of bow it out again, just like this, and then latch that in, latch that in, and then latch all the rest, okay? There we go, we can close the screen now, close it slowly and carefully. Make sure all of these clips are in as well. Okay, there we go, clip in all that. This, oh, this clip on this side was broken from the hinge yanking it out, so can't really do much with that. If you want, you can put some kind of glue there, but usually I try and avoid gluing the stuff together because then it's gonna be difficult to get out. Uh, this vent is kind of dusty, so I will let me try and see if I can brush the dust out of those vents. Okay, kind of. Not 100%, but a lot better than before. Okay, so now we've got that. I'm going to use this air blower thing and blow out the rest. Okay. Alright, so let's flip the computer back over. So these are the two screws that that I replaced with the hinges and the thread locker. Okay, so if you were doing that, just keep in mind these screws are holding the hinge onto the top cover. All right, so we're gonna put back the LCD or LVDS cable. Just route it back around these things. Okay, sorry if it's hard to see this, but. There we go, just like that. Line it back up. I'm probably gonna have to block this with my head. Let me see if I can do it sideways so I can see what's going on. But 
basically line this all up and then just push it down. It's hard to do this while recording it, but okay. Let's see, make sure it's lined up. Yeah, I might have to block this with my head while I'm doing it, but let's see, because it's difficult to line it up like this. There we go, I think that's in. Okay, there we go. All right, so we got that connector. That's the LCD, LVDS connector. Then we got to get all these other connectors. So the DC jack, make sure slide this cable back under all these little things that hold it in place. All right, just like that. Drag it all around. And make sure you plug it back in the right way. So you want these metal connectors visually pointing out that way, okay? The black connectors towards this way, the red ones on this side, and that should be correct, okay? So line that back up, and then push this back down, just like that. Make sure the connector is in all the way or your laptop won't charge, okay? like that okay and then the wireless antennas we'll put the wireless card back in first okay so it goes in at an angle like that hopefully you can see I don't even okay sorry and we'll put the screw in first so at an angle hold it down put the screw in just like that all right route the antenna wires over so they went over this way sorry if you can't tell but hopefully you can watch on the first video this one ended up being two-parter because I accidentally left the charger on and it overheated and shut off but route the cable around all right black one goes towards the bottom and the white one goes at the top so we'll plug this in, line it up. Usually to make sure I lined it up properly, I rub my fingernail over the top. If it doesn't move around, then it's lined up properly. And then I just, oops, I have all my junk is falling over right now. Okay, and then route the cables properly. So it goes around that piece, there we go. And then the black connector as well. Line it up. There we go. And then push it down. All right, route that around. There we go. So now we got all the connectors in place. Last one, we put the SSD and then the battery. So we got the SSD connector here slot it back in at an angle like that close this all right and push this down oh i forgot we also have to put back the regular uh sata hard drive the two and a half inch sata hard drive okay so grab the hard drive down here i'm pushing all my junk out of the way so i can show you this all right, so just slot it in like that again. And the connector, just make sure you line it up and then push it down. All right, make sure it's in completely. Put back in the four screws. And sometimes after you disconnect the battery and everything, you might have to plug it in for it to turn on properly. If it doesn't turn on, if the screen stays black, there's a good chance that you didn't seat the RAM properly. So you want to check that. Okay. There we go. All right, so we got the hard drive in. Last thing is the battery. Okay, so let's grab the battery. Yeah, and you want to slide the bottom half in first, then you can push this part down. Make sure you plug in the battery the right way. 
Okay. Pop, oops, sorry, you can't see that, but just pop it back in the right way. Make sure to push it in completely. And then route this cable back in. There we go. Don't forget, it uses a T8 screwdriver. So we need to put the T8 screws back in. There's three on the top, and then there's two at the bottom. So put back those. And then we just put back the cover, and we should be good to go. All right, so just like this. I can't see that. Okay, so we get that screw. And the last screw. All right, so now we got all those screws in. Just put back on the bottom cover. Slide in the bottom first. Zoom out. So we're gonna put this back in, slide the bottom in, latch this down, clip in the top, and then put that last PH1 screwdriver screw back in. All right, so there we go. Did I, oops, there's two more screws I almost forgot are the two up here. Don't forget to put those screws back in as well. All right, and there we go. It's fully reassembled. Now, let's see, we gotta just power it on, make sure everything's working right. Okay. Flip it back over and power it on. Oh, I do need to plug it back in, don't I? Oh, it's turning on. I just had to hold the power button for a little bit. So I see the screen is slightly lit, so it's probably gonna complain about something. Oh, actually it's spinning already. That's strange, it didn't even show the Dell logo. All right, so here you go. The computer's on, everything seems to be working. So hopefully this video helped you. If it did, please like and subscribe because that'll help me. It'll also help others find this video. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Uh, one other thing, if you did have to glue your hinges, I recommend for this model to leave the laptop closed so that way the epoxy can um, stay towards the bottom of the hinge and seal prop and set properly. All right, so once again, thank you for watching. Hopefully this video was useful. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.